Hey guys, this is Joe with LVV. I'm working on a boiler, a New Yorker, and um, let's see here. And what I got going on is a solenoid in here is buzzing once the once the uh, solenoid closes for the gas valve. So watch here. No damper opening up. Got a new gas valve right there. And I checked it before. We have 24 volts. I scraped a little bit off. So we got 24 volts here and here going right here. Okay. You hear that noise? That's the stone right in here. Shattering. The highest 24 volts is not too high. It's not too low. You should check for that. If it has any, uh, let me shut this down. So, if you're low in voltage or high in voltage, you might make make this thing chatter, especially if it's low in voltage, okay? So, I just wanted to show you guys, we're going to change this gas valve out with the direct replacement, and we're all set. We have to take the gas gas line off the, the sensor over, over here, and then we put in these, uh, these lines. All right, so guys, we have the old gas valve out. We're going to install the new gas valve in. All right, this is the new gas valve right here. All right, here is where, right here is where we're gonna be putting the gas line back. Right there is gonna be the sensor for the uh, for the coupling, okay? So that the flame, so that this tells the gas valve that the flame is in fact on, and then it allows the uh, the gas valve to open and, uh, and turn on and then heat up this boiler, which is a steam boiler, which I really don't work on steam, okay? However, this is a customer of mine for AC and everything, and, and I all the starting components are all the same. I just don't mess with the whole the whole steam thing. So if you need a steam guy, he can call a steam guy. But just to, to fix out a, a plain Jane gas valve, not a problem. Okay, so we'll get this in, and then I'll show you uh, exactly what we're gonna do. So we got the nipple off, and then we're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get the fitting in right here. This and this are gonna go together. One, two. All right, that's going to lock right in there for the gas pipe. And uh, I'm going to go from there. Remember, whenever you do this, though, one pipe, one wrench goes here. Because you, you don't want to start twisting the whole distribution tubes here. So you can put one one right there. And then you start tying this in. All right. And then um, and you always use the two, the, the two, the two pipe, uh, the two wrench method where one is going one way, one going the other way, so that you don't twist or crack or break the pipe just going to show you guys how we pipe dope all right so we're going to mix it up a little bit all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take this go right in the threads you don't have to put too much but don't be too chintzy either all right it's only five to it's really 3.5 inches of water column with pressure so it doesn't have to be it doesn't it's not like ac when you have 400 psi in your joint it's got to be a really good joint I'm not saying this should be a bad joint at all but i'm just saying you don't have to over tighten too much the psi is very low so you're just gonna go right here get it on there just like so and then what we do is we're going to go right here. I like to go backwards a little bit sometimes until you, or you'll feel a click. It'll seat right in. Then you start to turn. Always do it with your fingers. Okay. Always with the hand first. All right. Because you don't want to cross that. And then we're going to get a little bit, we're going to get a little, um, I'm going to get my small wrench. Where is that? It's not this one. It's here somewhere. It's my little tiny one. And that one's gonna uh, get right here. We don't want, you don't want to go on the threads. You want to go on the space right there. And then you need to crank here, and we're gonna get it in there. And then when you actually put the nut on, it's gonna probably tighten this up in even further. Okay. All right, guys. So what we did is we thoroughly cleaned the inside of that to make sure there's no uh, no 
you don't want to get any clumps inside here, which is going to go right inside there, and it can clog up the, the, the screen. See, there's a screen just like that on both sides. So what we do is we cleaned up this. I just put some pipe dope on that there. And now I'm just gonna tie this right on to here. Let me see if I can get you some, some pictures. So now this is gonna go here. Again, finger tight. Let's not make a huge mess. And what we can do is we're gonna use our wrench here. As we're tightening this down, this starts to turn also. All right, so it's just, it's, it, it tightens it even more. So you don't have to go too tight in the first one. See, they're both starting to turn a little bit. One. I always could put a wrench on here and here, but you don't have to go too nuts. All right, so now it's in there, nice and tight, all set. All right, the last thread that we have to do is this one right here, which is connected to everything over here. Now we're gonna we're gonna put a, a little wrench over there, and this moves out a little bit, so it gives us some flex. We don't have to take it off. All right. If it was any, if this is in danger at all, I would take it out. But it's not, it's not necessary. So remember, hand tighten first. Never tighten with the wrench at the start. So right there. Now it's getting a little bit tight. We'll probably just end up going. Maybe one more turn with their in the wrench and that's it. All right, so the gas valve is in. All right, nice and straight, up and down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this, I'm gonna put all this back together here. Again, finger tight. All right, that coupling will be good. I'm gonna get a wrench here, a wrench here, make sure it's nice and tight. We'll do a bubble test here, here, as well as in here. All right, because once you touch a machine, you want to make you're married to it, so you want to make sure that there's no leaks, especially from your joints. And if you touch something and one of the joints kind of opens up, again, you're the last technician there, so you're going to be the one that's going to uh, uh, that's going to be you know uh, held accountable. So make sure you always check everything. Everything's tied back in. It's on pilot. The way you light these guys up, okay, is you put it on pilot. You don't push this down like on some. You, you push this down, you get a flame and go right there. See what that is? So what you do is you press this down manually, and then you just put the flame right there on the top, okay? Sometimes it takes a little bit of time because you have some air in here, so you wait for the gas to push through. All right, it goes right inside, and then it'll, uh, it'll light that pilot. And with these pilots, sometimes you have to hold it for 30 seconds to like two or three minutes depending if it's been out all day or if it's a new if it's a new uh, flame sensor okay um, and then once it's lit up okay now what you could do is you go from pilot to on and then if it's calling upstairs as it should be what's gonna happen is going to uh, turn all the, the it's going to you know it's going to if it's calling it's going to open up the damper okay let's do this. this is the reason why it doesn't start right that's it let's see that's turning right now you hear like i'm not sure if you hear the crackle of the metal turning once it turns fully it'll engage it'll tell the brains to uh to turn it on, it's going to see that the pilot's on. There you go. And that's it. That turns. It engages everything. It says that the stack is open. Once the stack is open, it's going to make sure that you have a flame down there. If it does, it's going to kick it on. And voila. 
Mm. That's, we've got flying Houston. We've got liftoff. And this no longer is, is buzzing. Okay. So the 24 volt cylinder in here was weak. So it was just chattering like that. All right. So bubble test, you basically just take some bubbles, throw it all over all the joints. Okay. Um, and then you just make sure it's not making any extra bubbles. All right. You always can get a gas sniffer. You can get a gas sniffer as well. All right. This is working fine now. So if you get something that's buzzing over here, and like I see what I did, I just kind of shaved off a little bit, and then I took a 24 volt reading, make sure the 24 volts was in there because I couldn't really get my my probes back here, and this was getting 24. If it doesn't get 24, it's a little less. It might chatter because it doesn't have enough boom, enough voltage to close that that um, that solenoid, but it had 24 volts, no problem, and it was still making the noise. So bad solenoid. And you can't change it unless you change the whole thing. Alright guys, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.